Now on the mound for the Eagles is Dawson Taylor. Dawson Taylor looked terrific last time on the mound. He struck out the side in order. So we'll see what the right-hander has here in his second outing in the Car Shield Collegiate League for Forrest Terman's Eagles. As he faces the Cavemen who have plated nine runs in the first two innings. Mitch Daniels now to the plate. The lead off this inning will be Mitch Daniels, Caden Deal, and Chase Gibson facing off against Dawson Taylor. The right-hander misses low with that pitch. We talk about pitchers who look terrific. Three strikeouts in a row last time out. Happy to get to see more of this powerful right-handed pitcher once again on the mound. That pitch is hit glove side for a strike. A two balls and a strike against the shortstop who's 0 for 1. Pitch missed upstairs. Here in the top of the third inning, We'll see if the Eagles can't keep the Cavemen off the board. Not something they've been able to do in the first two frames. Two runs in the top of the first seven in the top of the second. As Daniels pops this ball up. Arnson was running over to it. But it drops on the right side in front of the Eagles dugout. As neither the catcher Anderson or first baseman Arnson could get to it. And the count runs full, three balls, two strikes to the leadoff hitter here in the top of the third inning. Mitch Daniels, the shortstop. Taylor was impressive the last time, the only time he's been out there. Pitched against the Falcons last Friday, struck out all three batters he faced. Yeah, as we mentioned, I mean, he's had some electric stuff. And so now the first four hitters he's seen <laughs> in the Car Shield Collegiate League have gone down via the strikeout. Dawson Taylor's on the mound just... You don't even need any fielders out there in the field. Just he and the catcher and the hitter. That's all you need. Caden Deal comes up, walked, and came around to score in the second inning where the Cavemen scored seven runs off of the hands of a home run from Connor Kiffer. A nice two RBI double from Luke Mann. Some big time action. Nice offensive parade early on for the Cavemen. As Taylor misses upstairs with that one, also loses his hat. He tried to find the high strike. Man, the right-hander delivers. That ball's fouled away. And the breaking balls hit to the left side and foul. And you talk about strikeouts. That's something that the Eagles pitching staff has done a pretty good job of coming into this game. They had 42 strikeouts and 30 innings pitched as a staff. So that's pretty efficient, pretty effective. And they've had some numbers go up. Trosser with nine strikeouts in just five innings. A couple other, obviously Taylor with four now in an inning and third on the season. He almost puts away Deal on the outside pitch, but it's now two balls and two strikes as it just misses. They got some good pitchers on the staff as that ball's hit up the middle by Deal. Thrown over from Jacobson to Arnson to put the hitter away. First hitter that does put the ball in play against Taylor but does get retired, so not two away for Chase Gibson. That's Taylor on the season here in his second outing. So he faces the catcher, Chase Gibson, who reached on an air last time by Maslowski. Hit that ball well, but Maslowski, I'll tell you, he should have caught it. So two away, nobody on. And at the dish is the catcher, Chase Gibson, for the Cavemen, who have a 9 to nothing lead 
in the top of the third inning. Old Caveman Eagles action. That pitch missed upstairs. The 2-0 delivery from Taylor is popped up. The second baseman, Jalen Jones, running back and makes a nifty play on it for the third out. So Taylor sets down the side in order. We will send it to the bottom of the third. You're watching Car Shield Collegiate League TV. Six, Dawson Taylor back out for another inning of work. As he misses upstairs with that first pitch. As Zach Floyd leads things off here in the top of the fourth inning, nine to four is the score. As the Eagles plated four runs last half to get on the board, they were trailing nine nothing but notched four against the right-hander Chase Stevens. And now Dawson Taylor back out for another inning of work in his second inning. Retired the side in order, worked a good clean inning in the third. Last time we saw Dawson Taylor come out, strike out the side, and then he was removed from the game, but this time getting to a couple innings of work. Was not sure how many he'll go today. But the right-hander delivers a nice fastball for a swing and a miss from Zach Floyd. So here in the top of the fourth inning, 9-4 to four is the score. McMahon started the game, and now Taylor coming in relief. Ball's foul back to the screen. So two balls and two strikes. And Taylor delivers the 2-2 pitch right back to Taylor. Puts a glove on it, flips it over to Arnson for the first out. Good play by Taylor. Ground ball right back at you. Good old PFPs. Nice PFPs right there. They You'll don't happen all it. that often, but when they do, you get to see those pitchers get to be described as athletes. A lot of times mm -hmm. people would like to hate on them, but they are big time. The movements they have and the way they can throw the ball with the high velocity, the demands on the body it takes, but then also they got to be able to, from time to time, try to flash the leather. You love to see it. They teach you. When you're a young pitcher, always be ready for that comebacker, be in that good fielding position. They do. Charlie Bornoff might disagree. He says pitcher fielding practice is a big waste of time. Oh, no, he the, says no. Yeah. He says finishing, finishing in a fielding, fielding position, position it can, is a waste it of time. It can hinder your mechanics a little bit. Well, yeah, when you think about you're going to completely rotate through the ball and then you're going to say, oh, I'm going to get in a fielding position. There yeah. has been some new most, train of thought in baseball training mm -hmm. to say that that may not be the most advantageous thing to do to be a pitcher. So that's kind of where I had some of that rhetoric about do do you get taught that? Should you get taught that? Uh, that and that's, well, let's dive I mean, into a conversation about that. I never, you know? <laughs> never said you should. That's – that's a good point. It's the things that, never training, that training has evolved since since we were kids, even. Oh yeah, training's evolving, especially since we were kind of coming. This mm -hmm. generation's coming up. The training there has been a shift in that training about. Okay, do we need to focus on finishing in a fielding position, or do we need to more focus on having the most to finish? efficient mechanics and try yeah. to hack that kinetic chain as a swing and a miss from Tyler head camp. He goes down because most of the time you're not going to, you might get two or three balls hit right back at you in any given game. So the, just it's all percentages. It's all percentages. So you, I think the idea is spending the time on the stuff that matters on the things mm -hmm. that you will do. It's, most. it's important you, to you be, but most, most of the pitches in a game. Yeah, most of those plays are reactionary plays anyway. Right. So like being, being in a good day. fielding position yeah. isn't really going to do you a whole lot of good. Because a lot of times a pitcher, the ability to 
kind of block off that front side and completely rotate mm -hmm. through, you, you're going to finish, if you're a left-hander, towards one of the bases, not really towards home plate, because you want to completely rotate through and get the most efficient movements out of your mechanics. And if when you're rotating the, the, your hips at a such high velocity to uncork them back and try to get into a good fielding position, sometimes isn't the best thing to do, but there is a balance there. And I think it all comes down to being athletic as well. I mean, look at even past generations, look at guys like Bob Gibson. He would finish his windup and be totally almost off the off the mound on the first base side <laughs> he didn't, he didn't he, care about he didn't a fielding need a position. fielding position See, he just struck no everybody out no one's exactly. touching him exactly <laughs> with the minuscule era and <laughs> going complete game after complete game it was a different time back then Indeed. but then again that that kind of it's always a different that, time it Rossi. always is every time's a different time nine to four is the score here in the top of the fourth inning as Taylor works a 3-1 pitch to Sperling. Called for a strike. So now three balls and two strikes with two away in the top of the fourth. 9-4 to four is the score. We'll see what Mr. Taylor brings on the full count. Pitch miss upstairs. He loses Sperling. Now bring up Luke Mann. Not the guy you want to – you'd rather face man leading off an inning versus with a runner on base. Never want to face him. He's <laughs> That's You got a good point there. <laughs> if I had the choice, I'd just say put him on first. Man's been decent this season so far, hitting 6-15 no, coming into this know, game, but then also a has a couple singles, a couple runs scored, and also two RBIs, so put that to about 6-30. Yeah, just a casual 600. Coming into this hitting 615 with two singles, four doubles, two home runs, five runs batted in, eight runs scored. Had another double and a couple RBIs today. <laughs> then add what he's been able to do on the mound as well, two innings, five strikeouts. But we'll see what he can do against Dawson Taylor, the right-hander. The pitch missed away. Man on the day, two for two with two runs batted in. He's pulled both of his balls to right field. Both of them have been line drives, making good contact both times. Swing and a miss, a healthy 3-0 hack. Oh, let it eat, big dog, let it eat. Three zero, nine four 9-4 lead. Have a hack, why don't you? We like to see that. No matter the count, I'm loving that. <laughs> As Taylor comes set and delivers a pitch, misses upstairs, so after... Making a nice play on the mound and striking out head camp. He walks Burling and Mann, so now hitters on runners on first and second to bring up Seth Halverson. Seth Halverson started this mm -hmm. game on the mound, but he also started this game. He started all the scoring off back in the yeah. top of the first inning, had a two-run home run as he hit the ball over the big wall over there in right field, then went on the mound and threw a couple of scoreless frames, struck out four hitters. So we'll see what he does here with runners on first and second, his team up 9-4. to four. How about Mann and Halverson back-to-back -back in an order? That's, that's just not fun. That's when you're playing the show and you press L1B, intentional <laughs> walk or whatever it is. L1 circle. <laughs> L1 circle. <laughs> That running fastball catches the strike zone. And the right-hander who works from the first base side of the rubber for the Forrest Herman's Eagles in the top of the fourth inning, Dawson Taylor with a one-ball, one-strike count to Halverson. Nice pitch for in for strike two. So two on and two away. One ball, two strike count. So 
Two balls and two strikes as Taylor's working on Halverson. Kiffer would be the next hitter, but we don't see him in the on-deck circle. Maybe potentially a situation where they would roll this one, but it doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. Halverson <laughs> gets rung up on strikes. Tyler gets it, and we will send it to the bottom of the fourth oh. inning. Oh, Halverson just four. got tossed from this game. And Halverson gets tossed to argue in the strike three call. Interesting developments. Mm. We'll sort it out for you when we get back. You're watching Car Shield Collegiate League TV. 